The Story of Jimmy Connors' Career Hello and welcome to this in-depth video on the story of one of the greatest tennis players of all time, Jimmy Connors. Connors was a dominant force in the game during the 1970s and 1980s, and his career is one that is remembered by fans and analysts alike. His fierce competitive spirit, his aggressive and uncompromising style of play, and his never-say-die attitude have inspired generations of tennis players around the world. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Connor's life and career, from his early beginnings in East St. Louis to his dominance on the tennis court, and explore what made him such a legendary figure in the world of tennis. James Scott Connors was born on September 2, 1952, in East St. Louis, Illinois. He grew up in a sporting family, with his mother being a tennis coach and his father being a professional basketball player. From an early age, Connors showed a natural aptitude for tennis, and he started playing the sport at the age of two with a wooden racket. By the time he was six, he was already competing in local tournaments, and by the age of 12, he had won his first national junior title. Connor's early success on the court was no doubt due in part to his upbringing. His mother, Gloria Connors, was a formidable figure in the tennis world, and she instilled in her son a deep love of the game and a fierce competitive spirit. Gloria was known for her unorthodox coaching methods, and she often pushed her son to the limit in training sessions and matches. This intense training paid off, however, and by the time Connors was a teenager, he was already one of the most promising players in the country. Connors' career took off. He won tournament after tournament, establishing himself as a fierce competitor on the court and a dominant force in the game. His style of play was aggressive and uncompromising and he was known for his fierce determination and his never-say-die attitude. He quickly became one of the most popular players in the world, and his matches were watched by millions of fans around the globe. In this video, we'll explore Connor's career in more detail, looking at his major triumphs and defeats, his rivalries with other players, and the impact he had on the game of tennis as a whole. We'll also take a closer look at his personal life, including his relationships with other players, his family, and the challenges he faced off the court. So, sit back, relax, and join us as we take a journey through the life and career of one of the greatest tennis players of all time, Jimmy Connors. Personal Life Connors was known for his fiery personality on the court, but off the court, he was a private person. In 1979, Connors married Playboy model Patty McGuire. They have two children, a son Brett and a daughter Aubrey. Connors was also known for his close friendship with fellow tennis player Chris Evert. The two started dating in 1974 and were one of the most high-profile couples in the world of sports. They even played mixed doubles together, winning the 1974 Wimbledon Championship. In 2013, Connors released his autobiography, The Outsider, a memoir, which gave readers a closer look into his personal life and career. In the book, he revealed details about his relationships with Everett as well as his struggles with gambling and his strained relationship with his mother. Tennis Career, 1974 The year 1974 was a career-defining season for Jimmy Connors, as he dominated the tennis circuit like no other player had done before. Connors won an astounding 15 tournaments in 1974, including the U.S. Open, which was his first Grand Slam title. What made Connors' performances in 1974 so remarkable was his consistency and his unrelenting will to win. He had a fierce fighting spirit and would never give up, no matter how far behind he was in a match. Connors was known for his aggressive playing style and he would often come to the net to finish points with his powerful volleys. One of the highlights of Connors' 1974 season was his U.S. Open final against Ken Rosewall which is considered one of the greatest matches in tennis history. This epic victory helped cement Connor's reputation as one of the greatest fighters in the game. 1975 In 1975, Jimmy Connors made it to the finals of Wimbledon, the U.S. Open, and Australia, but unfortunately failed to clinch a victory in any of them. Notably, his loss to John Newcomb was by a narrow margin as Connors lost 9-7 in a fourth-set tiebreak. However, he still managed to win nine other tournaments, earning an impressive 82-8 record for the year. Despite earning enough points to retain the ATP number one ranking throughout the year and receiving the top ranking by Reno Tomasi, 
All other major tennis authorities, including the ATP, named Arthur Ashe as the Player of the Year. This decision was likely influenced by Ashe's commanding win over Connors at Wimbledon. Notably, Connors did not participate in the Masters Cup or the WCT Finals that year, 1976. In 1976, Connors won the U.S. Open again by defeating Bjorn Borg and won 12 other events. He achieved a record of 98 and beat Borg all four times they played. He was ranked number one by the ATP and recognized as the top player by several publications. However, Bjorn Borg was named the ATP's Player of the Year. 1977. In 1977, despite losing to Bjorn Borg in a grueling five-set Wimbledon final and to Guillermo Vilas in the U.S. Open final, Jimmy Connors claimed victories at both the Masters, where he defeated Borg, and the WCT finals. Throughout the year, he retained the ATP number one ranking. However, Borg or Vilas were ranked as the number one player by World Tennis Magazine and other respected tennis authorities, with Connors placed at number three behind Borg. 1978 In 1978, Jimmy Connors faced a formidable Bjorn Borg in the Wimbledon final and suffered a defeat. However, he later secured a convincing victory over an injured Borg at the U.S. Open, which was played on hard court for the first time. Additionally, Connors claimed the U.S. Pro Indoor title. Despite ending the year as ATP's top-ranked player, both the ATP and most tennis authorities named Borg as the Player of the Year, considering his French Open win and other notable performances 1979 to 1981. Between 1979 and 1981, Jimmy Connors consistently advanced to the semifinals of the top three Grand Slam events and the Masters each year. While he clinched the WCT Finals in 1980, he maintained a general ranking of third in the world throughout those years, 1982. In 1982, Jimmy Connors experienced a remarkable comeback, securing victories over John McEnroe in a closely contested five-set Wimbledon Final and Ivan Lendl in the U.S. Open Final, which also helped him reclaim the ATP number one ranking. He went on to win five other tournaments and reached the semifinal of the Masters Cup, Although he traded the number one ranking with McEnroe throughout the year, Connors finished as the runner-up in points earned, but was named Player of the Year by the ATP and ITF World Champion due to his wins at Wimbledon and the U.S. Open. 1983. In 1983, Connors was locked in a fierce battle for the world number one ranking with John McEnroe and Ivan Lendl. Throughout the year, these three players traded the top spot several times, with each taking turns at holding the number one position. Despite this intense competition, Connors was still able to achieve an impressive feat by winning his fifth U.S. Open championship, defeating Lendl in a thrilling final match. Despite this victory, Connors ultimately finished the year ranked number three in the world, behind both McEnroe and Lendl. Nonetheless, his remarkable success at the U.S. Open cemented his status as one of the greatest players of all time. In conclusion, Jimmy Connors' career was one of the most remarkable and impactful in the history of tennis. He was a fierce competitor, known for his aggressive and relentless playing style that thrilled audiences and intimidated opponents. Throughout his career, he amassed an incredible 109 singles titles, including eight Grand Slam titles, and spent a total of 268 weeks ranked as the world number one player. But Connor's legacy is about more than just his impressive on-court accomplishments. He was a trailblazer who changed the sport of tennis forever. He popularized the two-handed backhand, brought a new level of intensity and physicality to the game, and helped usher in a new era of professional tennis. Off the court, Connors was a complex and controversial figure. He was known for his brash and sometimes confrontational personality, which sometimes led to conflicts with fellow players and fans. However, his passion and dedication to the game inspired countless fans and aspiring tennis players around the world. Despite his sometimes divisive persona, Jimmy Connors will always be remembered as one of the greatest players to ever pick up a tennis racket. His incredible career and impact on the sport will continue to be celebrated for generations to come.